Hi guys, I'm Scott. I'm usually the one running the camera, but today Nikki's taking a turn doing that and I'm going to talk you through a little bit of dressing a wound. We had this little girl got chewed up by some coyotes a little bit yeah. last night. Luckily the Pyrenees were doing their jobs fairly well, so her wounds are looking bad, but they're actually pretty superficial. So we already kind of cleaned her up a little bit this morning, but we're going to walk you through it again. Um, so what we did was we took just a water bottle with some clean water and poured some prepidine, iodine, that sort of stuff in it. And then just poked a little hole in the top there to make our own little squeeze bottle. So here's kind of the extent of the damage here is what you can see. So a decent little chunk, but not terrible. So what we do first is just kind of spray this on here. And this is pretty fresh looking because we already got it cleaned up really good earlier but we just want to go down and make sure any scabby stuff is peeled off um what we did about 20 minutes or ago or so is we gave her a shot of meloxicam that's a painkiller so that she's a little more comfortable while we're doing this so we just want to scrape everything down really nice and make sure it's down to good fresh skin and flesh on both sides pick away any little dead edges and that sort of thing um, if you're a day or two after, or if it's dried out too much, you can take some scissors and kind of clean up around the edges there to give nice clean seams. But for the most part, it's just really focusing on getting it right down. How you can see that there's no extra dead tissue there. It's all looking pretty good right now. All right. Then we've got this stuff here. It's a derma gel spray. It just promotes, um, healing and a little bit of a numbing factor in it too i think to help her be a little more comfortable just a squirt bottle so if we're just going to be pretty generous with that and we're going to do both sides the flap and the meat we're pretty lucky this girl's quite cooperative um, then we've got this stuff. It's called red coat. There's red coat and blue coat. It's just a aerosolized um, Wound sealant basically the blue stuff the blue coat is more for your fungal and bacterial and that sort of stuff um, I'm more into the horses and cattle end of things So if I had a horse with scratches, I'd be using the blue coat But if I had them cut up in some wire, I'd use the red coat so the blue coat dries things out and helps clean it and heal it. Uh, it's a antiseptic, protective, wound dressing, germicidal, and fungicidal. And the red coat is scarlet oil, antiseptic, wound dressing. So that's kind of the main difference, but they both, if you don't have one, the other will work just fine either way. So we just, again, spray on and just try to promote as much good healing as we can we're going to be pretty generous with everything and then earlier this had already dried and that was kind of tucked in like that and it kind of scabbed together and it wasn't very nice so we had to go through and actually get rid of all that scabbing and stuff that was holding it together and get things laying as flat as we possibly can and then we're going to take our gauze here and just start wrapping firm enough to kind of make a nice seal and make sure that skin is laying nice and flat how you're wanting it but you don't want it to be too tight that it's cutting off circulation either so it's kind of a fine line there and we're just going to keep going with this dressing to cover up all this bare meat and give as much protection to it as we can it's kind of a bad time of year with all the flies and stuff. Our biggest concern right now is keeping the dirt out and keeping the maggots out. So we're going to do a couple layers of protective dressing on it. We're doing the gauze, cleaning it, and then doing the chemical and medicinal layers. And then we'll do a couple layers of fabric as well. So we've got the gauze here, and then we'll use vet wrap, which I'll get to in half a second here.
And if you want to make life easier on yourself, you'll remember to open up the packages before you get started on this. But... So, kind of an important thing to remember is pay attention to your tendons in the back of the leg and stuff. You got tendons kind of going right along the back and in the same contour as the leg. So you want to make sure that you're wrapping in a way that's not going to be discontorting them. So again, I want it to be snug enough that it kind of stays in position. This is actually not a terrible spot on her because that hawk helps hold it up fairly good too. But up near the top here is a little bit trickier, so that part has to be a little bit snugger, but still careful not to over tighten. Something that we have done already um, on her is we've flushed out the injury and the wound with peroxide. So that helps get rid of any dirt and helps to also get rid of the, any infection that might have gotten into there. Thankfully, unfortunately we didn't get this on video, but we didn't see much fizzing of the peroxide, which means that there isn't a lot of infection in there, which we're extremely happy about. Again, we're figuring that the coyotes got to this little girl last night. We did hear the dogs barking a lot and in a different area than normal. So our thoughts are that the coyotes at this time of year, it's August here in Alberta, and the coyote mothers are teaching their pups how to hunt. So for people that have sheep, this is a prime time of year from August to October where you're going to be seeing a lot more coyote problems because those pups are learning how to hunt. Now, normally that wrap sticks to itself pretty nicely, but this stuff's not wanting to. So in our first aid kit, we've got a handy dandy roll of just your standard black electrical tape. So you take your electrical tape and just overlap it by a couple inches there. And again, all the tape is doing is keeping it from coming unraveled. You don't want it to be too tight either. The loss of circulation is going to make more problems for the overall leg. And also, you need that blood flow and circulation to come to the affected area to allow for the healing properly. So, that's how we doctor up a coyote bit sheep. If you have any questions feel free to let us know and we'll do our best to answer them for you now our protocol for an injury like this as we've already mentioned is giving loxicam as a painkiller and anti-inflammatory and we have also given her a shot of oxy la or um, a drug that has oxytetracycline in there to help make sure that she doesn't get an infection and just a long acting antibiotic that just gives her a little bit of a boost to her immune system because she's kind of feeling a little depressed and sorry for herself and it's going to give her a little boost to help fight off any infection that might have got in that we weren't able to get washed out um it's kind of a rough time of year we're really wet this year so we've got her in this pen but it's not the cleanest as much as we'd like it to be but we'll be getting some fresh bedding into her here right away so really it's just do what you can and hope for the best so we do la like nikki said and then we gave her a shot of medicam that's kind of a fast acting short lasting type of painkiller and then we also gave her a shot of um flinixin it's also another name for it, dibanamine something like that and that's more of a longer drawn out pain relief for her so we're really trying to just do everything we can to kind of get her spirits lifted up and take that edge off so she can start getting up and moving around and feeling better. The more she moves around, the better it is for her too. It's going to promote the circulation and everything, getting back into that area. So we really just do what we can and hope for the best. And just to finish off our video here we will be giving her some electrolytes in her water tonight and giving her some alfalfa pellets and grain 
So she's going to be sticking in this pen here for, well, basically until we see that leg really starting to come along and heal. We want to see good flesh coming on there before we put her back out with the flock. And even at that point, we will be monitoring her extremely close so that we don't have any maggots get into that wound or anything go backwards on her. We do have a lot of hope for this little girl that she's going to make a good comeback. Again, with livestock, there isn't any guarantee, but everything that she's showing us so far is very, very positive. And as for how often to change the dressing, we're just going to kind of eyeball it for now. It's kind of hard to explain what we're really looking for there. But right now, it's very early on in the treating process, so she'll be getting it changed three times a day, morning, around lunchtime, and then again in the evening. Um, try to keep them kind of six to ten hours apart somewhere in there so that you're not wasting your supplies and wasting money either. And the better it looks, the more will spread the numbers out. They might get down to every one in the morning and then one in the afternoon and then eventually might just get down to one a day. And after that, the next step is just to be leaving it open and letting her heal up on her own. But that's a little ways off. Um, for repairing a situation like this, what you're kind of hoping for is about... Uh, I did know this a while back when I was treating a horse. Uh, at that point, I think we were hoping for about a half, half to three quarters of an inch of regrowth and healing a week. So for this one, we're probably looking at two to three weeks of getting her to where she's good to go again. So I just want to be very clear about this as well. This is not to replace a vet. This is just in case it's going to be a long time before a vet can get out to you or you can get into a vet or sometimes you just don't have the money for a vet with all this covid and everything going on right now money's tight and it's really hard to justify a thousand dollar vet bill for a three hundred dollar sheep sometimes so you kind of gotta be realistic about things too but if you don't treat it and keep it clean and get it healed up then you're gonna have a total loss so by all means still consult your vet go and do that stuff this is just our personal experience kicking in of what we've learned over the years of what works and what doesn't and this is just how we deal with things that we can do on our own but this is by no means a professional veterinary uh replacement replacement